Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Okay, the one chapter we get a break from Joseph. Genesis chapter 38 and it came to pass at the time that Judah went down from his brethren he leaves his brothers and turned into a certain Adullamite whose name was Hira and Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua and he took her and he went into her now let's go back to chapter 24, verse 3. And it's going to say something. We're going to read something that many people are not going to like, but it's tough. You have an argument with God, not with me. When it's talking about that Jew, he says, 24, 3, And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. And you find in the New Testament, Paul says, you can marry whoever you want to marry, but they got to be in the Lord. So that's Abraham to his servant for Isaac. Let's look at chapter 28, verse 1. Verily, verily. It's an important message when it's twice in the Bible. 28.1. And Isaac called Jacob. So Isaac, the first one we talked about, the son. Now here's another son, Jacob. And blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Plain and simple, isn't it? Jacob forgot to tell his boys. Now, by the time we finish this chapter, you're going to see Satan trying to destroy the seed. Now, how many children did Jacob have? Twelve. Why is Satan picking on Judah? Because Judah is in the line of Jesus Christ. We've already messed up Reuben. We got Reuben doing the same thing that happened in the Corinthian church. We got Levi and, S and Simeon. They, they killed the whole family out of deceitfulness. Can't use them. Joseph is such a great type of Jesus Christ. The firstborn son of Rachel. And yet God says, I'm going to choose Judah. And Satan says, oh yeah? You're going to use filth? Watch what I'll do to him. We'll see it in a moment. And so... Satan gets to Judah and says, why don't you marry that family, those group of people that God did not want you to marry? Judah should have went back to where Laban is. That's already what happened with, with Isaac. That already happened with Jacob. But Jacob doesn't know which boy is going to be the one. And she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Ur, Er, however you want to say it. And she conceived again and bare a son and called his name Onan, Onan, however. And she yet again conceived and bare a son and called his name Shelah, Shelah, whatever. He was at Chizib when she bare him. Three sons. There's that number three again. Isn't it funny how some TV shows you had a program called My Three Sons? The Brady Bunch had three boys. Isn't that interesting? 
In My Three Sons, you never saw the mother. The Brady Bunch, there were three sons of, of a father, but not the mother. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, like Abraham did for Isaac. And he chose whose name was Tamar. Ruth 4.12, 1 Chronicles 2.4, and Matthew 1.3. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, this would be the one in line of Jesus Christ now, was wicked. See Satan working? In the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Said, that boy is just too wicked. You're gone. You're dead. Imagine if God did that today, and he does do it to some people. Some people say, you know, you're just too wicked. You're gone. But we're looking at the line of Jesus Christ here. And a lot of people, well, why did God do it? What gives God the right? Because we're looking at Jesus, and you can't have a wicked man in the line of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, Satan. This is Genesis 3.15. This is Satan bowing the woman's seed. So, and Judah said unto Onan, this, this is the second son, he would be rightfully the firstborn, Ruth chapter 3, Ruth chapter 4, scripture with scripture. Now remember, we're not under the law either here. There is no law, that's Exodus 20. But God has already established a law for when it comes to Jesus Christ. So let's see what Satan does now. Go into thy brother's wife. This is found in the law, but there's no law now. If your brother dies and he's married, has no children, you go on to the wife. And the child that she produces by you will be your brother. I guess you'd be very careful who your brother marries. Because you may end up with her. Or in the scriptures. Go on to the brother's wife. Perfectly right. He's dead. She's a widower. And marry her. And raise up seed to thy brother. Get no law, but here it is. Where did it come from? That's been God speaking to him. And all I knew that the seed would should not be his. That's not my son. That's my brother's son. So evidently, Onan had a problem with her. He had a hatred with his brother that... I, I, and then you have the clause in, in Ruth chapter 4 where the next the next kinsman to Ruth and Naomi, he says, listen, I, I can't do it because I'll mar my, my own inheritance. I can take the land, that's fine, but I can't take Ruth. But with Onan, his, by God's reaction, is he's totally not doing right. He is selfish. And then Onan knew the seed would not be his, and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilt it on the ground. I'm not having no children. Least that he should give seed to his brother. It's not my son. I'll do the marriage bed, but I'm not going to produce the child. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So he's like, hey, just don't have no children. We're not going to have Jesus Christ, okay? Satan's point of view, we're not bringing Jesus. We're going to cut it off right here. There's only going to be 38 chapters in your entire Bible easily memorized if we don't have Jesus. But we do have 66 books, and we do have Jesus. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house. Go to your father. I'm not responsible for you. You're married to my sons. You have nothing to do with me. Go back to your father. Till Sheila, my son, is be grown. That's the third child. For he said, Least preventure, he die also. Judah is blaming for Tamar for killing his boys. And when you look back, it said he was wicked, God slew him. He, he didn't pass the seed on of his brother, and God slew him. It wasn't Tamar. Man, the blame game. 
we are 35 chapters away from Genesis chapter 3, and we're still passing the blame game on. As his brethren did, and Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. So, guess there's going to be no Jesus. In the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted, and went up into his sheep shearers to Timnah. And his friend Hira the Adolamite. There are some bad friends in the Bible. And they give rotten advice. Not all friends are good. Not all friends are of God. And it was told Timnar, Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goes up to Timna to shear his sheep. That's where you, you raise her own, you know, you take off and make a wool. And she put her widow's garments off from her. So there was a garment that women wore that says, hey, I'm a widow. And covered her with a veil. And wrapped herself. And sat in an open place. And if you read and studied the book of Proverbs, you know about this open place. It's too bad that Proverbs was not written yet. Solomon has not been anywhere around yet. Because had Judah had the book of Proverbs, he maybe would have been warned. This is a strange woman found in the book of Revelation. I mean, book of Proverbs, excuse me. And she's strange. Because she's not the wife of Judah. She sat in a place which is by the way of Timnah. She didn't go to Timnah, she's in the way. For she saw that Sheila was grown. And she was not given unto him the wife. So Satan now... Oh, what about Shia? Don't worry about Shia. Go, go to your sheep. Oh, wait, wait. I gotta, get, I gotta get a wife from my boy. No, don't you worry about the wife and the boy. Just, just keep on going. Satan's doing all he can. He's got three children. Two of them have been killed by God, and there's one left. Just go about your business, Judah, will you? Stop it. Stop worrying. And when Judah saw her, he thought her to be in harlot. Because she had covered her face. So there was a veil for some women that, hey, you know, I'm loose and easy. And he turned unto her by the way. And said, go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. He couldn't tell the face. The veil. And he's like, I like you. Come. And she said, What wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? Now she's going to play the whore. What, what are you going to give me? What are you going to pay? He said, I will send thee a kid from the flock, a goat. And she said, Wilt thou give me a pledge till thou send it? All right, you ain't got a goat with you, buddy. You better get some collateral here. It's a security deposit for sex. The token is a thing that you do with a pawn shop. You walk in there and say, I need $1,000. Well, what are you going to give for the $1,000 to make sure you're going to pay it back? I'm going to give my grandma's old uh, uh, cuckoo clock. My old grandfather clock. I'll give you this diamond ring. I got my car. I got my house. I'll give you something if I can get that thousand dollars. And then you get what you give when you pay back the thousand dollars in interest. That's the definition of, of pledging. It's another word I found kind of interest. It's called hostage in the 1828 dictionary. You are a hostage, according to what Proverbs said, you, the, the, oh, what is it? The debtor is in, in bondage to the lender. And that's not how the, I forget how that verse is. And it's true. This is a perfect definition. Tamar can keep whatever Judah is going to give her until he brings that goat. 
This is the Bible definition now on set for for pledging. So again, I'm gonna open up my mouth, say something wrong, I don't care. When you're gonna make a pledge of allegiance to a flag, you are making an agreement. You are putting yourself, according to the dictionary, to a hostage situation. To a piece of cloth that you can't find in the Bible anywhere. There are people more honored to that flag, and, and I don't care, turn me off, than they are to the Bible and to God and Jesus Christ, his son, what the Bible tells them to do. And some of them I got to wonder, you got a Bible or you got an American flag? One of them needs to be burned. Which one will it be? How about that for a question? There are some people who get upset if you step on the flag, walk on the flag, this this great, but they are not concerned about someone in a church not having a Bible and not having it open and not studying. Pledge in bondage until you get something back by you paying what you pay. He said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet, what's on your finger, the ring. They had signets back there in the ring. They would put it in the wax. And that was sign. And thy bracelets. He's wearing bracelets. A man should not wear what pertains to a woman. Jacob's wearing bracelets. Did you see that? Be careful what you quote, have quote in scripture. Because men can wear bracelets according to that verse. And thy staff. That's what he's walking with. That's his cane. That's what he uses for his sheep. That is in thy hand. And it's probably something specially made from. Probably from a stick that he found. Like that is a unique stick. And carved or whatever on it. Decoration of his own. So it's not just a piece of wood. And he gave it her. And came in unto her, and she conceived by him. He pays for it, and she gets pregnant. And she arose and went away, and laid by her veil from her, laid by her veil from her, and put on the garment of her widow. So now she, she's going back. Okay, I'm a widow now. You're, you just played the whore. Now you're going back to the widowhood. What happened to Sheila? Why didn't you just walk up to him and say, Hi, I'm Tamar. Wasn't you supposed to be giving me your son? But the relationship is between Judah and her now. Now we're really done. You can't have Jesus Christ at all. Because Judah has slept with a whore. And has produced a child by this whore. But isn't it God forgiving? Isn't it God great? And Judas sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adumna. He won't go himself. To receive his pledge. The bracelet, the signet, and the staff. From the woman's hand. But he found her not. Then he asked the men that place where she where this all happened, saying, Where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside? Where's where's this woman that people pay her for sex? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of that place said that there was no harlot in this place. Now Judah's like, Phew, okay, no one wants to recognize her, then no one's going to know, and I did my part. And Judah said, let her take it to her. I can't find her. She won't make herself known. Least we be shamed. Not paying your debt. And being with this woman. Even though she has a signet, she has the bracelet, she has the staff, the payment agreed was a 
kid of the goats, of the flocks. He did not pay his deal. And then when his friend says, hey, listen, I went in there. I couldn't find her, and the, the men said there is no one. Okay, the deal is we can't find her. Can't pay who you can't find. Behold, I sent the kid, this kid, to go, here he is, and thou hast not found her. And it came to pass about three months, three months, three, there's that three again. You know how many numbers there are? Why does that three keep showing up? After that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar thy daughter-in-law has played the harlot. Uh-oh. Well, his heart is beating. And also, behold, she's with child by whoredom. She's pregnant. And Judah said, Bring her forth and let her be burnt. There's no law. But playing a whore is worthy of capital punishment to be burnt. That's harsh, but. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father in law, Judah saying, By the man who these are, am I with child? And she, uh, with child, and she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these, thy signet, and bracelets, and staff? And Judas now, he's got a big lump in his throat. Those are mine. Uh-oh. I've been caught. Be careful. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, God's not marked. Hagar will show up. <laughs> now, 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 isn't this a fine mess that Satan's got Judah in? All right, we can't make the women not barren because God can overrule me in the barrenness. <laughs> well, I'll just have the firstborn son sell his birthright. <clears throat> can't believe it. The second born son got that blessing. Oh. Darn you, God. <laughs> we be Satan's word. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll take the next son. Here, go sleep. Go sleep with your father's wife. Got, oh, man, he's got more children. Oh, come on. Trying to stop Jesus. All right, I'll take the next son in line. And why don't you guys murder him? Can't do that. And yet God uses Levi, who murders a group of people, he sets them up as his royal priesthood. <laughs> he says, all right, I'll take Judah. He's the next one in line. He's the one that God has chosen. I will just mess him and his children and that woman up. Now God can't do anything. Be the words of Satan. And Judah acknowledged him. <laughs> oh. Okay, boys, yep. And said, she has been more righteous than I. She's not guilty. Because I gave her not Sheila, my son. Oh, is that interesting? And he knew her again no more. There was no more re relationship between her, him, and Hagar. I'm not Hagar. Tamar. Iran. Well, Judah admitted his sin and gave innocency to Tamar. And it came to pass in the time of her travail that, behold, twins were in her womb, two children. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand. That's a breach. It's supposed to be the head. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be clean too. I mean, just, just picture a woman giving birth and here comes the hand. Hey. And the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread. Well, that's interesting. Now let's look at the Bible and red birth. 25, 25. 
Red thread, 25, 25. Looking at a red birth in the Bible. And the first came out red. All over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Oh, okay. That's a red birth. Here's a red birth here. Now let's look at the red thread. Joshua chapter 2 verse 18. Joshua 2.18. We're going to see some quinky dinkies. We're going to see some nuggets of Jesus Christ. When they get there. Joshua 2, 18. Red thread. You mean of all the colors they could have chosen? How many colors you can make from the seven boundary colors? Behold. When we come into this land, into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father, thy mother, and thy brethren, and all thy father's house home unto thee, and shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be thee in the house, his blood shall be upon our head, if thy hand be upon him. So, red thread is identify a whore for safety. And this woman is in the line of Jesus Christ. Song of Solomon, chapter 4. The red scarlet thread points to Jesus Christ. Pages sticking together. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 3. And this is the bridegroom speaking about the bride. But all this can be said about Jesus. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. It's the description of the bride of Jesus Christ. It is a scarlet thread that protected I was going to say Jezebel. Rahab and her family. It is a red thread that here this baby sticks his hand out and they tied a red thread around his finger. Because this is the first one that came out by his hand. And they bound upon his hand a th scarlet thread saying, This came out first. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand. That behold, his brother came out. And she said, How hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was called Perez, which means breach. His brother sticks his hand out. He pulls it back in, these two brothers in the womb are fighting. Who's that remind you of? Esau and Jacob. And afterwards came out his brother that had the scarlet thread about his hand and his name was Zayar. Now let's go to Matthew 1 verse 3 and let's see what God has done. Satan is trying to stop Jesus Christ. So let's check out Matthew chapter 1, verse 3. The line of a king of Jesus Christ. My page is sticking again. Let's start in verse 1. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. 
he was born. The son of David. The son of Abraham. See, I'm going to be great, 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 great grandpa. Abraham begat Isaac. We know about that. Isaac begat Jacob. We know about that. Jacob begat... There's that Judas I told you about last night. Judah is Judas. And his brethren, the twelve sons. And Judas begat Pharaoh's. And Zerah of Tamar. There's the woman who said, if you give me a kid of goats, I'll sleep with you. And I'm going to produce a child by you. And there's her name in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. It was like God saying to Satan. <clears throat> not only did you not stop Jesus Christ through Judah. I'm going to put her name in the Bible. <laughs> Luke chapter 3. I said, watch the seed of Jesus. Watch Satan try to destroy it. 333. That's a great number. 3333. Three, three. Luke 333. Which was the son of Amidab, which is the son of Aaron which is the son of Esron, which is the son of Pharaoh, which is the son of Judah. Now that's the New Testament for uh, Pharaoh spelled in the Old Testament, spelled different because you're in a different language. But there's that, there's the breach. There's the twins in the womb battling out in the line of Jesus Christ. There they are. So Jesus has in his line, in his genealogy, he has a breach, which involved a red thread. And another complicated pregnancy, as Rebecca had, as Sarah would have had, being 90 years old. Here Judah has two boys, they're killed by God, one over a woman, he doesn't get the third boy involved. So God does the next best thing. That firstborn son of, of uh, Jacob, Israel, the one that has not sinned, I mean, it can't be Simeon, it can't be Levi, it can't be uh, Reuben. I'll do the next best thing. I'll still have that child born of Jesus through Judah. <laughs> and you can just, God and, and Satan... You know, rook to king, checkmate, you're done. But Satan is not done. We're going to see it even more and more. But mark where Satan is trying to stop that seed of Jesus. And then even in the Bible when Jesus is born, despite the, the, the scene of the shepherds and the wise men, we don't know how many, Satan has the Roman government try to kill every child under three. Every child. Not just the male child, Pharaoh. But then you just wipe them all out. And what's God do? Israel, don't go to Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. Joseph, they're going to try to kill that boy. What do you want me to do, Lord? Go to Egypt. That would be almost like the last place where Satan would look. Satan knows that God's told him, because Satan knows the Bible, he quoted it to Jesus three times, wrongly. He quoted it to Eve, wrongly. And so Satan, with that, that no understanding, I think it's no understanding. It's either, it's either knowledge, wisdom, or understanding. I forget which one it is. See, Ezekiel 28. He doesn't realize that that'd be the last place I would ever think God would send his son, a Jew, to Egypt. Satan is trying to stop Jesus Christ being born. Another time he tries to stop Jesus Christ, he sends Mary, an animal, from all the way up north down to Bethlehem. The eighth, ninth month, yeah. Because when she got there, it was time for her to travail. 
And then he tries to stop Jesus by putting him in an animal trough, feeding thing. Flies and you don't know what kind of diseases. So where is Jesus in the Bible? Where is he in Genesis 38? He's in the line. Matthew 1, Luke 3, and Satan trying to destroy him. You know how you know Jesus Christ is the one, the way, the truth, and the life? Satan tries to stop him. Satan fears Jesus. Because if Jesus gets born, if Jesus suffers and dies on that cross, then death, there's no more, there's no more sting, it's victory. Thank God for Jesus.